Making the headlines this evening, Ministry of Armor and Indian Affairs Permanent Secretary arrested yesterday for accepting a bribe. Two persons killed in Burbies as a result of separate bee attacks. 25 Influential Women Leaders Award set for this October. In the region, Pfizer seeks U.S. COVID vaccine approval for children aged 5 to 11. And internationally, Kenyan researchers celebrate World Health Organization's approval of new malaria vaccine. Greetings and welcome to another edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. I am Bibi Vakas. Thank you for joining us. During a sting operation yesterday, officers of the Ghana Police Force apprehended the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Armour Indian Affairs for bribery. Esther Sobers has more details. On Thursday, Ghana Police Force detained the Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Armour Indian Affairs for accepting a bribe. Permanent Secretary Sharon Hicks allegedly sought $200,000 Ghana dollars from the owner of a security agency as part of an agreement to ensure the security service continues to receive contracts from the Ministry of Armenian Affairs. According to Tribe Chief Wendell Blanham, this had been going on for several months and the businessman was intimidated with losing the security contracts if her demands were not honored monthly. A complaint of the Permanent Secretary illegal side hustle was made to the Guyana Police Force and a sting operation was organized using marked bills. Sharon Hicks was arrested with $200,000 marked bills in her possession. She was taken to the CID headquarters for questioning about the allegations brought against her. However, she was released on bail. Police investigation into the matter continues. Headline news will keep you updated as more details unfold. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Silvers. Thanks, Esther. Investigators have concluded that the fire that destroyed the Brick Dam Police Station on Saturday, October 2nd, was caused by arson. According to Chief Fire Prevention Officer Sheldon Sons, this was based on evidence obtained at the scene and testimony from detainees. The police charged 26-year-old laborer Clarence Green with setting fire to the Brickdown Police Station after alleging that they had a video confession from him. On Thursday, he appeared at the Georgetown Magistrates Court. He was not required to plead to the indictable charge and was remanded to prison until October 28. The Ghana Fire Service announced that while it has concluded that the cause of the fire was arson, none of the prisoners, including Green, made any confessions to its investigators about starting the blaze. Despite being interviewed by the police, all the prisoners in the breakdown lockups at the time of the fire were also interviewed by the fire service as part of its investigations. However, there were no confessions made during the fire service's interviews. Fire Prevention Officer Sons said the fire service was thorough with its investigations and the investigations has been completed. We reported last evening on an alleged auto theft of a businessman's vehicle in the Kitty area, but this evening, the businessman was apprehended for faking the theft of his vehicle in order to file an insurance claim. Here is Esther Sobers with an update. A 27-year-old businessman on Wednesday staged a theft of his Volkswagen PYY 7703 at Alexander Street Kitty in an attempt to commit insurance fraud. On Wednesday night, he reported the vehicle stolen to police after leaving his keys in the ignition and going to a Chinese restaurant on Alexander Street in Kitty, Georgetown to buy some food. He also claimed the vehicle contained $500,000 in cash and several essential documents. On Thursday night, Dino was interviewed by police at the police headquarters where he admitted to staging the incident with a friend. The man claimed he staged the incident because he was frustrated after being involved in an accident with the vehicle and the insurance company refused to pay for the damages. He further stated that the plan was to destroy the vehicle to get the insurance benefit. The vehicle was found abandoned on Thursday at Ogle East Coast Demerara. The businessman was arrested and placed in custody. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Silvers. Thanks, Esther. Don't go away after the break. Two persons were killed in Burbies as a result of separate bee attacks and 25 Influential Women Leaders Award set for this October.
when you need money and you've got to get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-89. Decades, milk has remained the same, until now. Introducing the Great Dairy Full Cream Milk from Alabama Trading. Enriched with vitamins A to D and calcium to promote healthy teeth, strong bones, and vitality. Great Dairy Milk is delicious and fortified to encourage healthy cell growth within the body. No wonder it's the number one brand of milk produced in Ireland. Now available nationwide in 400 gram packages at leading supermarkets and wholesale vendors. Distributed by Alabama Trading. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Survival Shopping Complex brings to you its delivery service, Shop Through WhatsApp. This process is simple. All you need to do is call or message your grocery list to 613-9683 and we will select your items for you and have them delivered directly to you, even out of town. This is convenient because we can stay on the phone with you as we select your favorite brands. We're happy to do your shopping for you. Contact us on WhatsApp today and shop Price Smart at Survival Shopping Complex. Welcome back. One woman was killed after she was allegedly stung by Africanized bee in Burbies. According to a police report, 58-year-old Dorothy Adams, a housewife from Rotterdam, East Bank, Burbies, was discovered motionless one quarter of a mile away from her home yesterday afternoon. Police said Dorothy reportedly left home around 5 p.m. to go to a store, leaving her husband at home. About 10 minutes later, a passby saw the woman lying under a house and informed her husband. He hurried to her aid and was stung by the same bees, according to the report. The woman was rushed to the New Amsterdam Public Hospital, but she was confirmed dead by medical professionals upon her arrival. Her body is presently at the New Amsterdam Public Hospital, awaiting an autopsy to determine the cause of death. The 57-year-old John Sutherland of Eversham, Quarantine Burbies, also died as a result of being attacked and stung by Africanized bees at Quarantine Burbies. 
Around 12.30 on Thursday, the deceased left his home on a motor tractor with two other men to show them a rice field they had to plow. The deceased and the other males were sitting on the tractor fender as the driver was plowing the field. A swarm of bees attacked the men unexpectedly. They all jumped off the tractor and ran for safety. However, the deceased, who had one foot, was left behind. After the attack, the deceased was found lying motionless on the ground with several stings to his body. The man was taken to the Skellon Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead on arrival. The body is presently at the Skellon Public Hospital mortuary awaiting a post-mortem examination. One of the other men is currently receiving treatment at the Port Moran Public Hospital. Two like-minded and inspiring women founded the 25 Influential Women Leaders Award in 2019. Despite the cancellation of the awards in 2020 owing to the COVID-19 pandemic and hurdles in 2021, the annual event is expected to take place on October 23rd at the Arthur Trunk Convention Center. Here is more. This year, the co-founders of the 25 Influential Women Leadership Award Ceremony will be hosting the annual event at the Arthur Chung Convention Center at Liliandal on October 23rd. The event is going to be on the 23rd of October at the Arthur Chung Convention Center. It's going to be invitation only. It hurts our heart to say that. But this is what, what, you know, what it's to come down to. And we are following the very strict COVID protocols. And there's also a protocol of the number of people we can have in the space. So we are, we are really sticking to that. It's also going to be a vaccine-only activity. But the, but the beauty of all of that is that on NCN TV, as well as Facebook, it's going to be live. So everyone can see it, all the family members, etc., can see the award happening. The 25th Influential Women Leadership Award was birthed in 2019 by two like-minded and inspirational women, Linda Danzi Black and Michelle Nicholas, after recognizing that women in leadership roles are not sufficiently recognized and celebrated. The 25th Influential Women Leaders Award is an award scheme that celebrates women and the achievement of women. My co-creator, Michelle Nicholas and myself, had a conversation about women doing so much and there was no avenue for celebrating the achievements of women. The nomination of women for the awards is done by the members of the public. The finalists are selected from a panel of judges from the diaspora. So if, you know, the lady in your community, you know, she's been taking in children and she's been really good to kids and you have watched her from a child, now you're an adult and she continues to do that. And you think to yourself, this lady needs to be recognized for what she's doing. So you sit down and you would nominate that lady, right? And that nomination would come in to us during the nomination period because we had a one-month nomination period where we put it out in the newspapers, online, digital um, promotions, etc. As well as any other person who saw any woman leading in any field at all. Despite the cancellation of the event in 2020 due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this did not stop these ladies from recognizing and giving back to women. What we did, we didn't just go down, we, we looked at how can we support women. So we, we started providing for women, single women and mothers who needed hampers at the time of the COVID. So we still did something for women within the constraints and the, the confines of COVID. So that's what we did in 2020. So come 2021, we are observing that the people who are on the forefront, and I'm sure you will appreciate that. You go into the hospitals, you go into the clinics, who do you see? It, these are women. They work tirelessly to support the whole COVID response. And so we could have said this is another, we are still in the COVID um, situation right and we could have probably not done anything but we saw even more a need to celebrate women because our women are the ones who are supporting throughout the covid pandemic and so we decided that we are going to do the event 
but it's going to be a vaccine only event and we have to do it on a minuscule version of what we did in 2019. Mrs. Danzy Black reiterated that women are oftentimes at the forefront of things, even in our healthcare system during the pandemic, and are seldom given the recognition they deserve. Who's, who's acknowledging that leadership? You know, you see a single mother, she has four children. She is working, she might be still going to UG, she's still helping women in her community, she might be in the forefront of her church. She's leading. And who's who's celebrating her? So you see, it doesn't we we the the award transcend um, social status. It transcend all 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 sections of of society. So we are not saying that you need to take a CEO and put her there only. While the event will not be open to the public because of the constraints of the pandemic, it will be aired on other mediums on October 23rd, 2021. The event is going to be live, live on Facebook, live on NCN. We would really want to encourage persons to take a look at it, share it, like it, and let us create a revolution of women leading. Because it's not really about each of us, it's really about paying it forward and what you can do for each other. Don't go away after the break. U.S. is banking visits Mexico to discuss combating drug violence and Pfizer seeks U.S. COVID vaccine approval for children ages 5 to 11. But before that, here's the bridge retraction schedule. Survival Shopping Complex brings to you its delivery service, Shop Through WhatsApp. This process is simple. All you need to do is call or message your grocery list to 613-9683 and we will select your items for you and have them delivered directly to you, even out of town. This is convenient because we can stay on the phone with you as we select your favorite brands. We're happy to do your shopping for you. Contact us on WhatsApp today and shop price smart at Survival Shopping Complex. Girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. Oh. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Thank <laughs> you.
Freedom-based taxi service, transportation for every occasion. Short drop, airport, weddings, funerals, and much more. We're located at Law H. Durbin and Vicingen Road, next to Green City Bar. For honest, efficient, and reliable service, call Kingdom-based taxi service at 648-5959 or 227-7937. You can count on us. Welcome back. Now we take a look at news in the region and around the world. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is visiting Mexico to discuss rising drug-related violence there. Blinken and the Mexican government wants to form a new joint security plan. It is aimed at reducing cross-border crime by targeting criminal networks. Al Jazeera's Manuel Rapallo reports. More than 300,000 people have been killed in Mexico since the start of the U.S.-led war on drugs in 2006. And today, Mexico continues to make headlines as one of the most dangerous countries in Latin America. Since 2006 to, to these days, most of the violence is drug-related and it has become a much different violence uh, compared to what we had in previous years. For over a decade, the response to worsening violence has been a bilateral security strategy between the United States and Mexico known as the Merida Initiative, an agreement that was signed in 2008 between former Mexican President Felipe Calderón and former U.S. President George W. Bush. Since its inception, Mexico has received more than $3 billion worth of U.S. aid for security measures, along with training and equipment aimed at curbing transnational crime and reducing violence. There was a big effort to train police officers, which was carried out all over Mexico, municipal, state and federal police officers. So if you, if you depart from that baseline of training, of developing institutional capacities, there have been a number of baby steps, if you want to say, of some tiny successes that have been changed one after the other. Thirteen years after the agreement was signed, critics say the strategy has failed. There were 23,290 homicides reported in Mexico in just the first eight months of this year, according to statistics from the nonprofit group Causa en Común. And while the homicide rate over the past five years shows that violence has begun to plateau, Mexico continues to average more than 35,000 violent deaths every year. Desperate to reduce violence nationwide, Mexican officials recently declared an end to the Merida Initiative, adding that Mexico and the U.S. would work toward a new bilateral strategy. Some analysts, however, warn that a new agreement won't be easy to reach. I don't think that they are ready um, at this point to come to terms. Um, I don't know if the Americans are going to, to be very uh, strong-headed and very um, willing to impose some sort of, of, of agreement. Unless there is an agreement of minds, there is very little that can be accomplished. And unfortunately, I don't see that, uh, that coming together uh, very likely in, in 24 hours. While the U.S. has shown a willingness to negotiate on a new bilateral security arrangement, Mexican leaders have said cooperation will only be possible if the U.S. does more to stem the flow of illegal weapons crossing the border into Mexico. Both countries have stated their commitment to curbing violence, admitting that a drastically new approach is necessary. What's uncertain is if willingness alone will be enough to finally turn a corner on the most violent period in Mexico's history. Manuel Rapalo, Al Jazeera, Mexico City. Parents across the United States are debating whether to get their children vaccinated. It comes after Pfizer requested permission from the U.S. drug regulators to offer its COVID-19 jabs to children as young as five years old. Al Jazeera's Heidi Zucastro reports. Masking children is child abuse. A walk to school in California this week turned into a confrontation between anti-vaccine protesters and parents harassed for having their children wear masks. You better respect my children. Scenes like this are playing out across the country as tensions flare over how to protect children from the pandemic. This is the backdrop to Pfizer-BioNTech's application submitted Thursday asking the FDA to authorize its COVID vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. I think it's, it's the next step forward in, in moving us towards having a safe and effective vaccine for our youngest children. One, two, three. 
You did great, sweetie. Pfizer says in its clinical trials, children developed a strong immune response and no serious side effects when given a two-shot regimen at a third of the adult dosage level. Eight-year-old Sebastian Primal was among the 2,200 trial participants. It makes me very happy that um, I'm helping other kids get the vaccine and... Like, honestly, if I had to get the shot again, I would. Children now account for one in four new COVID cases in the U.S., and more than 500 have died since the start of the pandemic. Why are we losing any children to COVID if we have um, very simple fixes of masking, social distancing, and now a vaccine? But according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, only one in three parents in the U.S. plan to vaccinate their young child as soon as the government allows. My son in particular has some allergies that make me very concerned and, you know, I just, I don't, I don't trust it. California was the first state to announce a COVID vaccine mandate for public school children pending the FDA's full approval. Doctors say that's no different from requiring kids to be vaccinated against other routine diseases. This is a vaccine like any others, and, and I think our states and our school systems will have to think about how that fits into the, the broader, you know, their broader immunization plans. No mandates on your children. The FDA will likely decide within weeks whether to authorize the Pfizer vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11, who number about 28 million in the U.S. Health experts say that will bring the country another step closer to defeating the virus, but only if parents get their children the shots. Heidi Jo Castro, Al Jazeera. And internationally, researchers and health professionals are celebrating the World Health Organization's approval of a new malaria vaccine. It is especially welcome news in Kenya, which participated in the studies that helped bring about the jab. Al Jazeera's Malcolm Webb reports. It's taken more than a century for humankind to develop this, the world's first malaria vaccine. The World Health Organization has given it the go-ahead. What began as a trial here in Western Kenya is set to become an official rollout across the continent. It's given to children under two years, and parents like Phoebe Watende are pleased. In our family, we have had a lot of malaria-related problems. Some members have turned mud, and others, we've lost them, especially in our home. We have had a lot of malaria problems. Even after one has been treated, they still fall ill of malaria after a few months. Malaria kills about half a million people a year. Almost all of them are in Africa. Most of them are children. Progress in fighting the disease had stalled in the poorest communities in recent years. The WHO says the vaccine can change that. Its development was started by the US military and taken over by British drug maker GlaxoSmithKline. But the trials show it's only effective in preventing about a third of cases. Dr Bernard Zagutu, who worked on the research project, says that's enough to make a big difference. A number of the vaccines that we have used for long didn't have a very high efficacy, but had a lot of public health impact. And that's what is going to happen with this vaccine, even what we are seeing as a modest efficacy of 30%. But the impact in terms of lives and clinical malaria cases averted runs into millions. It's mosquitoes that carry malaria. After biting one infected person, they carry the parasite to another. Here at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, they've spent years studying every stage of the process. And the researchers working here say the approval of one vaccine opens the doors for more. These are mosquito eggs. Thousands of mosquitoes are being bred here every week. They're crucial for the research. The scientists are using the adult mosquitoes to try and develop a new kind of vaccine that would completely stop the mosquitoes from being able to transmit malaria. Scientists say preventing mosquito bites with bed nets and insecticides has been effective, but only up to a point. The vaccines are affordable and can be integrated into existing inoculation programs. Bringing down the malaria deaths in Africa will now depend on finding funding for the tens of millions of doses required every year. 
Malcolm Webb, Al Jazeera, Nairobi, Kenya. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now is your 3D weather forecast. edition of Channel 2 Hanai News Updates. Tune in on Monday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to subscribe and I can follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.